All right, so this question involves using two different indicator settings for a trailing stop loss, right? And so the two different indicator settings, and we're going to use the super trend in this example. So the diff two different settings is going to is it's going to depend on the amount of, of profit, right? So in other words, so when the trade first starts off, you know, we're going to have, you know, zero to X number of ticks uh, of profit there. And so, all right, so uh, we'll use a wider super trend setting for that. So a super trend setting of five, and this is going to be, uh, this five is going to be the uh, offset multiplier, I believe. Right, so we have on the chart here, here's our super trend with an offset multiplier of five. And then this other one has an offset multiplier of one, right? So, so when the trade progresses and, you know, X number of ticks of profit has been achieved, then, you know, so at some point, you know, when, when some amount of profit has been achieved, then the super trend is gonna get tightened up and we'll use an offset multiplier of one, right, to tighten up the uh, stop loss. Yeah, so there we go. So the inside super trend, that's going to have the offset multiplier of one. So right, it's going to be this one here and this one here. There. And so this outer one, this outer super trend has an offset multiplier of five here. All right. So, yeah, things to be very conscious of when you're using indicators to control your stop losses. And so the thing to be aware of is if, if you tried to take a long here, what would happen is, right, your super trend with the offset multiplier of five, it doesn't exist yet. It's actually up here. It's above the market. Right, so you have to be very careful of where your indicator is when you're taking trades. So yeah, so this, so setting your super trend, right, with an offset multiplier of five, you wouldn't be able to take any long trades until, right, the super trend, you know, goes from red and it flips down here. So you'd have to wait until this bar. Yeah, you have to wait until this bar before you could take a long trade because now the super trend is now below the market. All right. Yeah. So with that awareness, um, you know, when you're when you're setting up your trades, right, just obviously be aware of where your indicators are at, what side of the market your indicators are on. So, OK, so now let's open up. Blackbird, and let's show how to set 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 this set these up. All right, again, the key of this question is how to how to set up two different super trend indicator settings. We're going to start off right with an offset multiplier of five for the super trend, and then once there's X number of ticks in profit, then we're going to change the super trend setting to an offset multiplier of one, so which will tighten up the stops, right? So we can see that the, the um, oh, let's cancel this here. So our stops will start off down here, right? Following this wider super trend. And then, yeah, and then when we get X amount of profits, then the super trend will jump up and follow this tighter, uh, tighter super trend. So, okay, let's get this open again. Um, all right, so I'm just going to start off, <clears throat> just use a market entry. So the entry order doesn't matter to this question. So I'll just use a market entry and then we can jump down to the stop loss. And so I'm going to use, I'm going to start off using the parabolic SAR, um, from the quick list because the parabolic SAR is an indicator. So it'll have, it'll basically have the settings switched over to using an indicator for me. And it'll save me a little bit of time here. Um, and actually, I'm going to go down here and use the trailing parabolic SAR. 
All right. So now let's open up the stop loss. And we're going to we need to set up the initial placement first. All right. So where does the stop loss get placed when the position first gets opened, right? So, let's go uh, into the parabolic SAR settings here and indicators. So, we're going to replace the parabolic SAR indicator with the super trend. And the super trend that I have is from uh, Lizard Trader. So, you'll find it under the Lizard Indicators um, folder here. So, all these Lizard Indicators come. It's from the company Lizard Trader, but they actually have two, two websites, Lizard Trader and LizardIndicators.com. So you can go to either website to get these uh, AMA indicators here. All right, so let me scroll way down. And so I'm you, um, you'll see that there's actually two super trend indicators. So I'm going to use the U11. That seems to be the one that's most widely uh, known out there in the Ninja ecosystem. So uh, let's select that down here. All right. So now the next step is to change, you know, change our parameters here. So right. So we said we're going to start off with a mul multiplier of five. And if you are using a different um, period setting. You know, make sure that you adjust your period setting and other settings as well. Yeah, there's a range period. That's another one of the main settings. And let's see, uh, the base type, <clears throat> median, whether you're, yeah, depending on which average you're using, you know, if you're changing that. So, right, so make sure you change everything here according to how you have your super trends, you know, used on the chart. Um, and then we're going to use the stop dots. That's the plot, right? So the stop dots, those are the little dots that we see uh, with the line. So, all right. So with that, um, yeah, so bottom line, we have our super trend set up with the multiplier of five. So that's our starting indicator setting there. So there we go. So our initial placement is set up for the super trend. And then next, we're going to go into the trailing actions. And let's, let's adjust the name here. I'm just going to use ST for super trend. All right. So I'm just going to set this trailing rule up. So um, yeah, this first trailing rule is going to be used right from zero to uh, 10 ticks uh, of profit. So, and actually we can just kind of shorten this up to really just 10 ticks of profit here, All right? So what I'm doing is I'm setting up this first trailing rule here, right? This first trailing rule where, you know, where it's looking, well, this first trailing rule is, is, um, is gonna be active between our zero and X number of ticks in profit here, right? And so that's gonna be our super trend with a offset of five or a multiplier of five, right? So that's what this first trailing rule is for. So this first trailing rule, yeah, it's gonna be used until, right, until we hit 10 ticks of profit, right? So that's, that's what I'm choosing for this X, this value X here. All right, so um, where do we put in X number of ticks in profit? Well, that's gonna be the initial delay. So we're, we're gonna use ticks in direction and the default is 10 for us, All right? So this initial delay means that, um, actually, oh, no, sorry. Hold the horses there, I'm getting ahead of myself. Actually, we're gonna use no initial delay and no trigger. Sorry, because we want that trailing rule to operate from zero profit to a to whatever x number of ticks of profit. So uh, no no delay, no trigger. Uh, we're just simply going to go straight into the action uh, column here, 
and replace the parabolic star with our super trend indicator. So again, we're going to open up the lizard indicator folder. There's our super trend U11. Put that in there and just remember to change your indicator settings accordingly. There, so we're using the offset multiplier of five. All right, so we've adjusted the action. So, uh, right, the action, what does the action column do? Well, that's what, that's what the action is, what calculates the price for the stop loss. It, it's what calculates the trailing price for the stop loss, right? So this action is using the super trend indicator to calculate the stop losses, you know, new trailing price. So, and then repeat, since this is a trailing rule, it's going to repeat indefinitely, right? Trailing rules just keep repeating and re repeating and repeating. So yeah, indefinitely. And repeat every, we're just going to leave this on one bar, right? Because remember indicators, indicators only update themselves once per bar. You know, there's no really set and repeat every, if you're using ticks, that would just, that would, um, there would be no benefit to do to repeat every tick, right? Because the an indicator only updates itself when the bar closes. So, so you just want to keep this on bars. And so there we go. So there's our first trailing rule. Now the second one. Actually, I'm going to adjust this name here. Um, so there we go. So the first trailing rule really is just it's going to trail until. We get 10 ticks. And so the second trailing roll, the second one will take over after we get, once we get to 10 ticks in profit. Okay. So now this is, so this, yeah, this trailing roll is actually where we want to use a delay. All right. So we'll set up our, our 10 tick delay. So ticks in direction, right? So if the market is moving ticks in the direction of the trade, that means the market is moving in, in a profitable, uh, right, a profitable movement. So ticks in direction was, is basically profit. Uh, ticks against direction, well, that would be the market moving ag against the trade or moving in a, in, a, uh, in a loss. So ticks against direction, yeah, would be setting a delay looking for X amount of loss. So, But we're looking for X um, number of ticks in profit. So there we go. Ticks in direction is what we want. And then uh, we're not using a trigger for this. So we're just going to go to the action again and adjust our move to. All right. So we're not going to use price. We're using an indicator value to calculate, right, the stop losses trailing price. So I'll switch this over to indicator. And here we can see the uh, super trend was set up um, as a little convenience from the previous trailing rule. But now, this trailing rule, we want to use a multiplier of one. So, and then the repeat. Again, we're going to go and set the repeat to indefinitely, like so. All right, so this second trailing roll down here, well, that's this other requirement here, right? So once once we get past, or well, at actually, once we um, once the trade is at or past x number of ticks in profit, then we're going to use a super trend setting. Uh, of one, right? So the key to getting these two different, right, trailing rules to, um, yeah, to, to work is the initial delay, right? So the first trailing rule, the first trailing rule, it's going to operate, right, from uh, zero profit to 
to our, our 10 tick profit um, level. And well, actually, you know, in, in reality, this trailing rule, it's always going to be operating. But what's going to happen is that our other trailing rule here, once 10 ticks in profit has been achieved, technically what Blackbird does is Blackbird looks at both trailing rules. It looks at both trailing rules and it calculates the super trend indicator for both of these trailing rules, right? And of course, these super trend indicators have different settings, right? So the first rule, our first trailing rule, it's going to calculate a super trend, you know, with with um, a value here. Uh, well, all right, I can't I can't move the arrows, but right, the first trailing rule, it's calculating this super trend that's further out away from price, and the second trailing rule, right, it's calculating a super trend value that's much closer to price. Right, so Blackbird calculates, or, or I should say, Blackbird doesn't calculate, but Blackbird gets the value of both of these super trend settings. Right, so Blackbird gets those two values, and then, so once Blackbird has those two super trend uh, values, then Blackbird has to make a decision. Which one do I use? And that's what the evaluate using is set to. So the evaluate using says use the action that's closest to price. So in other words, which one of these Anna super trend um, indicators is calculating a price that's closest to the market, right? So which action um, which action price is closest to the market? You can see how closest you could think of it as closest to the market. So, and you know, definitely once we have, once this trailing rule, you know, is once it's once the delay has um, has been met, then right this super trend here, it's going to be calculating this this inside super trend value, which is going to be much closer to where the market is. So Blackbird's always going to decide to use this trailing rule because it's going to keep the stop loss price much closer. Yep. So there you go. So there's, that's how those two different trailing rules, um, operate there. So, you know, if, if, if you do really want to get into building a really complex set of trailing rules, we could, our first trailing rule here, you know, that's supposed to be running from zero to 10 ticks, you know, we could actually uh, disable uh, this trailing rule if we wanted to. And the way we can do that is we can go into the repeat here. So, right, so this is getting really kind of technical here with building your trailing rules, but we can go into the repeat and we can use repeat until and then, well, repeat until what? Well, we could limit that trailing rule so that it repeats until, um, right, we can look for a profit or loss. So we'll use the profit or loss. And so we're going to look for a profit and what we'll do is we'll set the units to ticks and then we'll put in 10 ticks. So this repeat, it'll repeat until we get 10 ticks in profit. And then, so once 10 ticks in profit has been hit, the repeat no longer repeats, right? It's only repeating until we get 10 ticks in profit. Yeah, so this trailing rule will, will it's now literally limited from, uh, it'll, it'll run when we get zero ticks in profit until 
and it'll repeat until 10 ticks of profit has been achieved, right? So then, so at that point, basically now, Blackbird doesn't have a choice. So this first trailing rule, its repeat turns this trailing rule off. So this trailing rule no longer functions. And then Blackbird's only left with one trailing rule to calculate, right? So you can kind of define, you can think of, um, of the initial delay as identifying when does a trailing rule start uh, to function, all right? When does a trailing rule start to kick in? Um, you know, just kind of right the starting point. And typically, you know, for trailing rules, it's um, we look for ticks and profit. So, but you could also use a time uh, or a number of bars. <clears throat> you can say, you know, wait until X number of bars before this trailing rule starts um, starts to um, uh, execute or starts to calculate. And then the repeat will, can be used, uh, right, the, the repeat until can be used to set a, a ending point for that trailing roll. So you can think of the repeat as, yeah, the repeat until basically turns the trailing roll off. Um, and once it, a trailing roll has been turned off, it's turned off forever, right? So the initial delay turns a trailing roll on and once the trailing rule is turned on, it's turned on indefinitely um, unless there's a repeat until, and then the repeat can turn a trailing rule off, um, right? And so when you have multiple trailing rules, you know, when tr multiple trailing rules all running or, you know, all executing, the way Blackbird determines which trailing rule gets used is by the evaluate using, right? So for stop losses, right? The typical way that you use a stop loss is you always use the stop loss setting that's gonna bring the stop loss closest to price or closest to the market price. So that's basically how multiple trailing rules do not interfere with each other, right? They don't interfere with each other because Blackbird's gonna be calculating all of these action prices, and then it's gonna say, okay, which one of these action prices is gonna bring that stop loss closest to the market price? And then Blackbird goes, okay, bingo. That's the one that brought closest. And so that's that'll be the price, the action price that Blackbird chooses to move the stop loss to. All right, so let me just kind of simplify everything. So that's, that's all that's necessary for this question here.